Hey guys, it's me, Tony. I bet you thought I'd never come back, but here I am. And I'm definitely not an imposter. And this time, I'm not wearing glasses under my sunglasses. Why would I do that? I don't even need glasses. I don't know where I come from. Must have been a crazy party. Anyways, why am I wearing glasses, sunglasses inside at all, you may ask? That is a secret. And what should have been a secret, but no longer will be, is this horrible, horrible story I found on my computer. I guess one of the Avengers wrote it. I don't know which one, but when I find out, they're gonna be in big trouble. It's very wrong. It depicts us in ways that are improper. And because I'm so mad at its existence, I'm going to inflict it on everybody else by reading it to you guys. Okay. Oh, it's okay if they it's do anything, say anything bad about Captain America, though, because <laughs> he sucks. Okay, and also, this is, I just realized, this is really long. Somebody spent a long time working on this. They should be very ashamed of themselves, though, because it's 72 pages of garbage. Chapter 1. Splendid, I'm back on Earth again, Thor said, strolling down the city street. I wonder if anything has changed. I can't wait to eat more Pop-Tarts. As he walked along, lots of people turned and stared. Yes, I know, I have hot muscles, Thor said, flexing at the people he walked past. He then saw Peter Parker walking away from a hot dog stand. It's hot dog time, Peter said, biting half of the hot dog off in one bite. He then saw Thor. Oh, hey, yeah, Thor. Do I know you? Thor asked. No, but everyone knows who you are, said Peter. I know, I know, Thor said, sighing. Oh, can I get a picture with you? Peter asked. Of course not, said Thor, flicking his long, golden, silky hair over his shoulder and swishing his cape around. I have important places to go to, little boy. Good day. I'm starting to think Thor wrote this. Thor then decided to go to Avengers Tower for no reason at all. Meanwhile, in Asgard, Loki was sitting on a random rock while making a thinking face. Hmm. I haven't caused any major trouble in a while, he said. Maybe I should. Should I pee in someone's bathwater? Nah, I did that too recently. Oh, the interdimensional portal is open. Maybe I should pay a visit to Earth. Yes, that's great. a great idea, especially since Thor is there. Loki hopped off the rock and ran away laughing. Okay, hold on. What is the interdimensional portal? What does this even mean? Whoever wrote this probably doesn't know anything about anyone. And how do I know this stuff? Because Thor won't shut up about it! Chapter 2 As Thor was flying, he decided to fly around Avengers Tower and peek all of the windows like a creepy stalker. Hello? Anybody home? He asked jokingly as he peeked into each one. Whoosh! Something large, cold, heavy, and metallic bumped into Thor, sending Thor twirling downwards. Oops, said Iron Man. It was he who bumped into Thor. Hey, wait a minute. Thor is here. Okay, okay. This story is getting good now that I'm in it. Thor flew back upwards and struck Iron Man with his hammer. Take that, you meanie. Oh, it is on, said Iron Man, pushing Thor away. Don't be damaging my suit like that, Thunderhead. Oh, who are you calling Thunderhead? Metal Man, Thor asked. I will strike you down with lightning. Iron Man swore at Thor. Are you threatening to murder me? I may be, said Thor, flying up above Iron Man. Well then, I am out of here. Catch me if you can, Iron Man said. He tried to fly off but was hit, not by lightning, but by Captain America's shield. Ugh, Iron Man said and looked down. Captain America was standing in the street below with his hands on his hips and an unhappy look on his face. You guys had better get down here, he said. Why, it's more fun up here, said Iron Man. Because now is not the time for fun, said Captain America. We're supposed to be cling! His shield came back down and hit him in the face, knocking him over. Oh shoot, Cap, said Iron, laughing a bit. You okay? He then descended with Thor following. Captain America, still on the ground, looked at them with a huge, goofy grin on his face. 
Avengers, assemble! He shouted, clapping his hands. He's fine, said Thor. Shut up, said Iron Man. What did you want, Captain? So, someone that know told me that goddesses don't wear underwear. Is that true? What about gods? Do they wear underwear? Do you wear underwear? How about thunderwear? Tee hee hee, Captain America said. Um, you're asking the wrong person, said Iron Man. But speaking of thunder, it looks like it's about to storm out here. Why don't we go outside? In outside? Shouldn't that say inside? Whoever wrote this is just proof that whoever wrote this knows nothing. Either that or they never proofread it. Which is still pretty bad. Hey, I didn't know Tony was short for Anthony, said Captain America. I thought it was short for Rigatoni. No nonsense. Get off the ground, said Iron Man. Help, help! I fall and can't get up, said Captain America. Well, I'm not strong enough to lift you. Have Thor do it, said Iron Man. Ha! I am strong enough to lift him and throw him, and he will clump to the ground. Bang! Anyways, back to the story. It will do, said Thor, scooping Captain America up. Inside we go, my friend! He then walked inside the building, followed by Iron Man. Wait, you forgot my shield, said Captain America. Pick it up, now! No, Cap- No, we're leaving it in the street for now, said Iron Man. No, Captain America cried. I like my shield. I like to sled down hills on it and shout, Go, go, Captain America! Iron Man picked up the shield. Okay, I get it. Now let's give you some rest, because you are acting silly, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain, said Captain America. Chapter 3, three hours later. Captain America lay in a random bed looking at the ceiling. Hey Jarvis, play some patriotic marching band music. How dare he tell my Jarvis what to do? Ugh, I'm gonna get very mad at him later on. There was no response. Hmm, why do we have random beds in our tower? It's not like people live here, said Captain America. He waited for a moment but got bored. Okay, I'm getting up, said Captain America. I've been here for so for long enough. Besides, I'm the captain, so I'm in charge. He then sprung up and left the room and then walked into a kitchen. Why would they have a kitchen? Who knows? In the kitchen, Dora was talking to Tony Stark and they both had a glass of beer with them. When did Tony get here? Captain America asked himself. I will go say hello to him, but I must be careful as he may be drunk. Are you talking to yourself, Cap? Tony asked, turning to look at Captain America. No, Captain America lied. What are you guys up to? Just having a couple of beers. Nothing much, said Tony. Beer is bad for you. You should not drink beer or other alcoholic beverages, Captain America said. Oh, you're just jealous because you can't. Get drunk, Tony said. I am not, Captain America said, blushing. I'm just looking out for the health of my team. Well, you're not a doctor, so back off, will ya? Tony said. Thor and I would like to enjoy our beers without your input. Heh, I like the way they ruined me so far, actually. It's pretty good. We were going to our fitness and strength test tomorrow, though, said Captain America. How can you do them if you're drunk? They actually didn't need such tests. Captain America just wanted to do them for fun. They always had to do what he said. Oh, relax. That's tomorrow. We'll just sleep it off tonight, Thor said. Captain America sighed and rolled his eyes. Okay, whatever you say. Suddenly, Tony shouted something indistinctive and fell from his chair. Thor tried to hold back his laughter, but he couldn't. Captain America stared sternly at Thor. You think these shenanigans are funny? Yup, Thor said smirking. Tony shrieked, scoring across the floor, and grabbed Captain America's foot. Captain America pulled his foot away in disgust. Tony, please, knock it off. Hey, you were acting silly earlier when you got knocked over by your shield, said Thor. True, Captain America reluctantly admitted. All right, I'll go find something else to do. See you both later. Tony pulled his shirt off and continued squirming as Captain America rolled his eyes and turned to walk away. Fools, Captain America muttered. Ow! He suddenly felt a sharp pain in his arm, and he looked at it. There was an arrow embedded into his arm. Hawkeye, Captain America shouted. You dare shoot me? Hawkeye lowered his bow and looked at Captain America with guilt. Don't pretend that was an accident. I know that your aim has 100% accuracy, said Captain America. Hawkeye lowered his head. Yeah, you better be sorry, said Captain America. Where is my shield? Hawkeye shrugged and started putting their bow into his arrow. Uh-uh-uh, Captain America said. Don't you dare. Take that outside if you're playing on archery practice. Hawkeye looked at Captain America with an intense stare and he continued putting another arrow in. At that moment, Dork out of his seat, which had dented under his weight. Wow, he said, I'll have to go back to Asgard now so that I can do Asgardian things. See ya! Ah, oh, but you just got here, said Captain America. Sorry, duty calls, said Thor. I'll be back soon. He then left the tower. Chapter 4, the next evening. Thor was flying around the tower once again. Since it's getting dark, there shouldn't be anybody else flying around now, he said. 
As he said that, Batman flew by. Oh, come on, Thor said. Fortunately, no one else was there when he made it to the tower. Almost all the lights were off, except for a single room which had a window cracked slightly open. Thor flew up to the window and peeked in like a creepy stalker. Inside the room was Tony Stark. Tony was on the floor, all sprawled out. Oh, look, Tony is in there, Thor said excitedly. I'll go in and greet him. Thor held his hammer in one hand, used their hand to reach in and pull the window down. Then he squeezed his gigantic body in through the window. Fortunately, his spinning hammer shimmer shattered the window. Shattered glass flew everywhere. Oopsie, said Thor. Hopefully no one steps on that. I'm surprised that did wake Tony. Suddenly an alarm clock. Oh, shoot, said Thor. I'm going to be in trouble. Please don't get me in trouble, Tony. I don't think he's ever called me Tony, though. So, this, man, this story is obviously fiction. The alarm began getting louder and louder. I think I'd better believe, leave before he wakes up, said Thor. Thor was about to climb through the window when his inside door swung open and Captain America stomped into the room. He caught Thor halfway out the window. Hey, intruder, Captain America yelled, shot thrown his shield at Thor. Thor lost his grip and fell down with Yoda! Thor cried as he pulled his hammer until he flew back up to the window. Captain America glared at Thor as he floated back up. What did you do to Tony? Captain America asked. What do you mean? Thor asked, looking at his twirling hammer. He's not that cold, said Captain America. You broke in and assaulted him, but why? I think we're better than this, Thor. I didn't do anything to him, Thor said. He was already like that. Thor said Captain America. I saw you trying to escape. You broke into the wind you broke the window, and now he's clearly hurt. You got into a fight and conked him with your hammer. Just admit it. No! Thor shouted. It's not true! I just happened to fight him like that when I was stopping by! Well, isn't that just inconvenient timing? I do not believe you, said Captain America. Thor frowned. Fine, don't believe me, but I'm telling the truth. Do you ever see a mark where a hammer could have hit him? Your hammer is magical, is it not? Captain America asked, looking at his watch. Oh, it's time for me to take a bath with Dr. Banner. See you. He then turned to leave. What if Tony? Thor called after Captain America, still twirling his hammer. To fly? He can take care of himself. He's a big, tough guy, said Captain America, turning back around. But that still gives you no excuse to knock him out like that. Shut up, or I'll lock you out! Thor shouted, becoming slightly larger. Whoa, boy, Captain America said, backing up as Thor propelled himself through the window. Thor plopped down back into the room. I think Tony had a heart attack, he said. Nonsense, Captain America said. He doesn't even have a heart. Now I have to go get into the tub before the water gets cold. And, for some reason, the next chapter is also called Chapter 4. <laughs> from. Uh, something is not adding up here. Uh, okay then. Alright. I'll just continue reading. As Captain America blabbed on and on about protecting the country and sticking to American values, Thor tossed the mushroom into his mouth. However, he accidentally choked on it and broke into a coughing fit. Thor coughed louder and louder, but no one even glanced at him as the meeting carried on. Blah, 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 that emo. What was his name? Loki. Blah, blah, blah. Thor continued coughing until he turned blue and fell off his seat. Bruce, who had been sitting next to Thor even though they hate each other, briefly looked up from a newspaper he was reading. Don't look at him. He's not important, said Captain America. What is important is blah, blah, blah. Still on the floor, Tony finally coughed. Thor! What? This is not say Tony. I would not be eating a mushroom. Who knows why Thor was eating one, though? Thor finally coughed the mushroom after struggling to breathe. Oh, he said, looking at the cough to mushroom. He then picked it up, put it back in his mouth, and began chewing again. Thor got up and got back into his seat, which began creaking under his weight. Everyone stopped blabbing and turned to glare fiercely at Thor. Will you stop messing around? This is a very serious meeting, said Captain America. Yes, and unless you have something important to say, keep quiet, said Tony Stark. Do you have something important to say? Thor thought, but no, he said, and then continued chewing his mushroom. Are you eating during our meeting? Captain America asked. No, Thor lied from his huge arm on the table. Very well then, Captain America said, looking at paper he was holding. As I was saying... Yoda! 
out, Thor suddenly shouted, jerking towards. What in the heck? Bruce shouted. Thor, cut it out with your stupid little distractions. Captain America grabbed a paper off a stack of papers that was sitting on the table. According to this chart, suddenly Mjolnir flew in through the window and ended Thor's hand. Gee, he hammer time, Thor said, twirling the hammer. Captain America cleared his throat. Thor settled down for a short time. But then he decided to be fun to repeatedly poke Bruce. What do you want? Bruce asked irritated. What's your newspaper say? Thor whispered. None of your business, said Bruce. Thor got out all off of Bruce's personal space space to read it. It said, Tony Stark's Nist paint almost dies. That's quite enough, said Bruce, sliding his chair away from Thor. This is why I hate you, Thor. That's quite enough, Thor said mockingly. What are you gonna do? Go a Hulk on me? Moments later, the glass window shattered as the Hulk threw Thor out of the building. Oh, come on now. Jen the hammer flew off the table and jumped out the window to be with Thor. Then Hulk threw the table out the window. Oh, come on now. That's what I just said, Tony yelled. Now we have no table. And Hulk then completely smashed a window. And one less window, said Tony. Then the Hulk threw Thor's entire Thor's empty chair out the window. Peter Parker walked by and saw all the things that were thrown out the window. Cool, he said, and took a picture of it and then kept walking. The Hulk jumped out the window and stalked Peter Parker. Someone's behind me, Peter said. He then began running. Please don't kill me! Ah! he yelled. That random kid is going to get killed, said Captain America. Are we going to let him kill a kid? I got it, Thor yelled from under the building. He then twirled his hammer. He just needs a conger doodle from this. No, Thor, that'll make things worse, Captain America yelled at the window. Thor just grinned maniacally. Yeah, seems like him. Um, okay, the next chapter is chapter three again. Okay. Yeah, this person really doesn't know how to count. Oh boy, I can't believe I'm still alive, said Peter. I thought I was gonna get killed for sure. Hey, where's my camera? I'm sorry, but it got destroyed, said Black Widow. What, how? Peter asked. The Avengers all looked at HR. You don't want to know how, said Black Widow. Fine, don't tell me, said Peter. Wait a minute, I'm in your top secret tower. Cool! Yes, and you have to leave soon, said Tony. Like, right now. But I almost got killed while I'm still recovering from the stress and trauma, Peter whined. I know, but you're just a kid. You don't belong here, Tony said. Fine, I'll leave, said Peter. But I'm very upset about the camera, you know. Calm down, kid. I'll get you a new one. How much caffeine have you had today, Tony asked. Peter sighed. I had two Red Bulls today, he then grinned. The Rod didn't give me a new camera, that's so cool! He's only doing it to make himself look good, Captain America said under his breath. Yeah, now you have to leave. Doors that way. Don't touch anything on the way out. You know what? Forget that. I'll guide you out, Tony said. Guide the, guide the wine and Peter out of the building. Okay, and for some reason, there's a yet another chapter four, and this one is written in a completely different format than their chapters, but because I never fell at anything, I will do my best to read it for you. The next day, the Avengers had yet their meeting. Captain America, there's Captain America. There are some things that we have to talk, we need to talk about that we didn't get around to yesterday. Number one, this. Hold up a newspaper from the day before. Tony, that is false news. Captain America, okay, whatever, dude. Scarlet Witch, wait, why is she here all of a sudden? She, she was never mentioned before. I'm sorry about your paint sniffing addiction, Tony. Tony, shut up, you're just an ignorant little child. Scarlet Witch giggles, it's okay, only all the Avengers will know about your little problem. Black Widow, but Bruce is not here, it looks overly really sad. Captain America, so what? We're gonna gossip about him now. Bruce walks in looking like he just got out of bed. Sorry, I'm late. Smiles nervously. Tony, apology not accepted. Bruce looks irritated. I had my reasons. Captain America, I bet they weren't good reasons. Bruce, they were, they were. Captain America, fine, but you look like you just rolled out of bed. Now sit your sorry butt down. We need to have a talk. Bruce, about me, looks nervous, sweats. Captain America, not exactly, about the big guy. Bruce, you mean Thor? Captain America, shh. He could hear us. Bruce glances at Thor's empty seat. He's gone again? Captain America whispers. Yes, but I'll be back soon. We need to get this done as quickly as possible. Bruce, get what done? Tenses up. Black Widow, surprise! Pulls up cake. Bruce, oh, cake, was it for? Black Widow, not for you, silly goose. Captain America, 
Hold on, I think he's coming. Thor comes into room with toilet paper sticking out of pants. I'm back, Pump's fist. Did y'all miss me? Scarlet Witch, um, surprise, throws a pitifully small amount of confetti. Thor, is it my birthday? Scratches beer. Captain America, no, even better, it serves it. Thor, hmm? Captain America, you know, Thor's day? Oh, come on, Tony told me this would be funny. Thor laughs heavily. Ha ha, that's hilarious. I like it. From now on, all Thursdays will be Thor's days. Pounds the table with fist and laughs harder. Black Widow, be careful not to pound the cake. Moves it away. Thor laughs even harder and begins wheezing, but continues to laugh. Bruce, I wish I could be that happy, look sad. Black Widow, does anyone want cake? Looks around. Bruce, I do, but maybe the Thor's day boy should get a slice first. Thor, Thor's day! <laughs> Howls with laughter as tears roll out of his eyes. Black Widow, does anyone have a knife? Tony, I think I have one. Let me go get it. Gets up and walks away, but then sees the toilet paper sticking out of Thor's pants. Tony, ha ha ha, reaches over and tugs on toilet paper. Thor turns around. What on earth, Tony? Tony, hey Thor, you've got some sticking out of your pants. Well, you could be nicer about it. Why? I thought everyone should know. Green smugly. Thor howls in anger. We ruined my Thor's day. May you be caught in a storm of lightning and thunder. Punches Tony in the chest. Captain America. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not get so violent. Scarlet Witch pulls a knife out of her pocket. Oh, look. I had a knife all along. Black Widow. Hand it over. Big boy needs his cake cut. Bruce. I'm not that big. Black Widow. And it's not your cake. Thor turns back around. Tony, I'm going to go take a bath. I'm going to take a break in Tony's calm down room. Staggers away. I do not have a calm down room. I'm always calm. Thor, ooh, cakey time. Black Widow. You like it? The cake says happy Thor's day and his little lightning bolt's crossing onto it. Thor, yes, pumps his fist again. Great, because we're going to chop it into pieces and then smash it up with our teeth and then digest it. I like that idea. Chapter 6, but I'm not even sure if it really is Chapter 6 anymore. A few hours later, Peter Parker was whining in a bathtub full of his own tears and whining. My camera, he whined. That's such a cool and good picture. It's not fair. He spent hours in the tub thinking about his loss. I bet that big, mean, greenie destroyed my camera. Peter said. He'll pay for what he's done. There's a knock at his door, but Peter warned. Go away, I'm bathing in my own tears. Hey, kid, it's just me, Tony said. I have that camera, I promised you. Peter jumped out of the tub. Really? Yes, and if you want to see it, put on some clothes, Tony said. On it, Peter responded, grabbed his dirty clothes and putting them back on without drying off. He then made his way to the front door and opened it. Hi, Avengers, he said. Tony was there, and so was Bruce. Peter looked confused. He glared sourly at Bruce. What brings you here? Uh, I got you something, Bruce said, handing Peter a bag. Something that I paid for, Tony said, crossing his arms. Shut up, Bruce said. Peter took the bag. Oh, camera thinks bye. He then tried to shut the door, but Bruce held it open with his foot. Aren't you going to open it? Aren't you going to open it? He asked. Yeah, something good. It costs a lot of money, said Tony. Bruce said, well, Tony. Um, okay, said Peter, opening the bag. And his eyes whined. Oh, yeah, he said. You like it, Tony asked. Yes, said Peter. Good, because that one costs a lot of my precious money, said Tony. If only I knew how to make cameras. He then winked at Bruce. Is your money all you care about? Peter asked. No, said Tony. I care about myself, too. And me, Bruce asked. How would you like me to answer that? Tony asked. Guys, if you can leave now, Peter said. I kind of had a bath that I wanted to take. Fine, said Tony. See you later, kiddo. Hopefully not ever again, said Peter, closing the door. Ah, back to bath time. He set the camera down on a table and went back to finish his bath. Okay, where is the next step? Chapter 7, an hour later. Why in the heck is a big chunk of my tower missing? Tony yelled. It was me, I did it, I'm guilty! Thor yelled, waving his arms around. Why? Tony asked. I thought you knew Bear. I thought I did too, said Thor, hanging his head so his long, silky, soft blonde hair hung in front of his face. I am so sorry! I don't forgive you, said Tony. This is gonna cost a lot of, cost me a lot to repair. Don't you have a lot of money anyway? Thor asked, blinking slowly at Tony through his curtain of hair. 
Yes, but that's besides the point, said Tony. Can a guy take a bathroom break with those home beans, bruh? Act? You were in the bathroom the whole time, Thor asked. Yep, said Tony. So where's Steven Bruce? Um, Thor said, looking around nervously. I suppose they're busy with stuff. I'll let camera mission go anyway. Splendid. Also, don't ask about it, said Tony. Thor looked at him curiously with sad, longing eyes. The hair was still in Thor's face. It hung there, softly and temptingly. Fine. The kid doesn't seem too excited, Tony said. I don't know why. I got him the best camera on the market. People just don't know how to appreciate things, said Black Widow, looking out the window at an ambulance that's pulled up to the villain. Alright, who the heck called an ambulance? Scarlet Witch looked back and forth nervously. I have to go wash my hair. Meanwhile, I guess I'll go check out that camera, Peter said slowly. He grabbed the camera, but it slipped out of his wet hands and fell to the floor. Oh no, no, my new camera's broken, Peter Ryan. This is so unfair. Now I'll take pretty pictures. He then bent over to pick up the drop camera, found not a single scratch on it. Oh wow, Peter shouted. Ow, it's a miracle, I believe. He then turned it on to make sure it was really going to work. Awesome, now I get to check the zoom function and the battery life and... Peter's overwhelmed by the coolness and fell over shaking. Wow, 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 oh yes. Just then not they walked past the bathroom. Peter, are you all right in there? Peter curled up and cried. It's so beautiful. He then began stroking the camera. Aunt May knocked on the door. What's so beautiful? Peter, answer me now. Mr. Stark, Peter said. He then whispered so quietly so that no one could hear. Thank you. What in the Aunt May said. Peter, no, stop that now. That man is not beautiful. Okay, I'm glad that so far there isn't any more that was written in that annoying format I had to read earlier. Why was it done like that? It's like different people. What if more than one person is writing this? That would be terrible. Everybody's getting it up on me to make me look bad. I don't like this at all. Chapter 8. That night, Tony went to take a bath for stress relief. First, he grabbed a bottle of lavender body wash and then headed to his bathroom. But then he found Bruce in his bathtub. Tony screamed, what are you doing in my private bathtub? Bruce opened his eyes, which had previously been closed. I'm relaxing, he said. How long have you been here, Tony asked. I don't know, I lost track of time, Bruce said. Nobody said you couldn't join us, Tony. Us, Tony screamed. There's more than one of you in there? Hawkeye popped out from underneath the bubbles, looked around, and then waved hello. Ah, Tony yelled. Never mind, I'll go use my air tub. You have more than one, Bruce asked, adjusting his glasses. Forget about it, Tony said, walking out of the room. Y'all nasty! Dang! Bruce shrugged and playfully splashed some water at Hawkeye. As Tony walked away gagging in disgust, the cell phone began ringing. He saw it was from Captain America. Nah, he can just leave a message, said Tony, and then went to his kitchen to find some beer to drink, but instead found Dr. Strange drinking a cup of tea. Who are you and how did you get in here? Tony asked angrily. I'm a friend of Thor's. Let me in here and said you wouldn't mind, Dr. Strange said. Well, Thor's a little liar. Get out, said Tony. I really thought you wouldn't mind, Thor said. Tony turned and saw Thor on the ground with a blanket covering him. What in that? Tony asked. We're having a sleepover, said Thor, rubbing a large hard object that was sticking up under the blanket. Tony turned bright red. Thor, stop touching that. Put it down right now. Why, well, it's just me old now, Thor said, stroking it harder. You gave it a name? Well, what kind of sick sleepover is this? Tony asked. You, you have your, 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 my friend Steve, said Thor. Didn't you introduce yourself, Steve? I am Doctor Strange, said Doctor Strange. Thor called me Steve, but you cannot. Steve is a dumb name anyway, said Tony. Get out of my house. Just then Tony's phone vibrated, he got a text message from Captain America. Hey, Steve is not a dumb name. Tony rolled his eyes. But we were gonna watch a movie later, Thor said. And how come you're already all wrapped up in blankets? That makes no sense, Tony said. We were cold, said Doctor Strange. Seeing as I'm not welcome here, I will leave. He then put the cup down left the room. Darn you, Tony! You drove my friend away! No, I didn't, Tony lied, sipping from Dr. Strange's glass. Thor sighed. Well, enjoy the tea, I guess. He then smirked and walked off, but not before asking, By the way, have you seen the Earth Steve since this morning? Tony turned even right red and stared at a sweat round down his forehead. This continued for several minutes until Bruce and Hawkeye walked past him. Tony, what are you doing? Bruce asked, stopping and adjusting his glasses. Hawkeye stopped behind him. 
Don't adjust your glasses near me ever again, Tony said with his teeth clenched. Excuse me, Bruce asked. Tony turned around. Oh, hi, Bruce. That's Dr. Bruce to you, said Bruce. Whatever, said Tony. The floor is all wet underneath you, said Bruce. Tony looked at the Pope's sweat under him, then at Bruce. He looked at the Pope's sweat and back at Bruce. Uh, he said. Yeah, said Bruce. Anyway, you're, anyhow, your tub is empty now and free for your use. Good, Tony said tersely and then stumped with them, glancing at Hawkeye. That's because Hawkeye is boring and not important. Bruce looked at Hawkeye. Look, there are bl blankets on the floor. Want to get under them and have sleep over while watching the movie? Bruce asked. No, I have to uh, clean my bow, Hawkeye said. Shh, you're not supposed to have any lines in this story, Bruce said. Besides, you just cleaned it yesterday. I saw you. Hawkeye rolled his eyes. Sleep over it is. No talking, Bruce shouted. Chapter 12. That doesn't seem right, but maybe I should tough comment on that fact because, like I said before, it was made by someone who does not know how to count. Since Captain America has decided to bail on us, I am currently in charge of the Avengers, Tony said. Any questions? Bruce raised his hand. From people other than Bruce, Tony asked. Bruce put his hand down. There's this end not for sounds that the door coughed a little bit. No, don't start that coughing nonsense again, Tony said. Sorry, Tony, I don't know what's going into me, said Thor. It is not law for gold to cough. Yeah, and you're not a god, said Tony. Okay, the meeting's over. You're all dismissed. I'm going to visit. go visit Captain America in the hospital. Oh no, what happened to him? Bruce asked. You know what happened. You threw him out the window, Thor said, elbowing Bruce. You did, Bruce? Is that true? Tony asked Bruce, glaring at him accusingly. No, Bruce said, turning red in embarrassment. I don't know what Thor's talking about. It was a few days ago, Thor said. How could you not remember? You just tossed the poor fellow out like he was a piece of garbage. I didn't, Bruce said, looking like he's about to cry. Honestly. Well, thanks for letting me know, Thor, said Tony. That means that you can come with me when I visit Captain America and Bruce can't. Ha ha ha. Who will be left in charge, Bruce asked. Definitely not you, because you're too violent and destructive, Tony said. So, I pick Hawkeye. I'm not violent and destructive, Bruce said, wiping the tear that ran out of his eye. Honestly, I'm not. That's what you keep telling yourself, said Tony. Thor and I are going to leave now. Goodbye. Chapter 13. Tony tried to drive calmly, but Thor wouldn't stop coughing. Could you cut it out? Tony snapped. Well, try, Thor said, but fell miserably. Tony sighed and turned on the stereo, which began blaring heavy metal music. We'll be there soon. We'll be there soon, he kept repeating to himself. Soon they were there. Yes, now I can fall the gallon stretch, Thor said, get out of the car. The whole car rocked and shifted as Thor made his way out. Vroom. Tony sighed and stepped out after Thor. Okay, big buddy, you let Bear stop coughing or you might not be able to visit, okay? Okay, Thor said. I've got to get this under control. Yes, you really have got to, Tony said. Let's go. Chapter 14. Hi, I'm Tony Stark and I am here to visit my BFF, Tony shouted to cover Thor's coughs. What's his name? asked the person at the front desk. Captain America, said Tony. First name Captain, last name America. Um, no one here has the name of the person at the desk. Are you sure that's his name? Yes, said Tony. That's what he told me it was. Okay, okay, no need to touch the person at the desk. I'm not deaf, you know. Thor chuckled, but quickly stopped as Tony glared at him threateningly. Well, I guess I'll find him myself, Tony said, walking off. Come on, Thor. Wait, you need to pass our security check, said a random security guard. Why? Tony said bitterly. I'm not a threat. And you need a badge, said the security guard. A badge? Now you're just messing with me, said Tony. I need no such thing as a badge. Relax, we'll just give you a quick pat down, said the security guard. I want one, said Thor. No, you don't, said Tony. Fine, do it. You'll see that I'm not dangerous. The security guard then began filling Tony for any weapons or suspicious items. Take off your jacket, the security guard said after an awkward silence. Why, Tony said. I'm cold. Make sure you aren't hiding anything, said the security guard. I'll help you get that jacket off, said Thor, pulling Tony's jacket off. Tony scowled. Can't the guy just stop by to cheer up a friend? Yes, but only if he does not possess any weapons, said the security guard. Okay, now take off your shirt. Tony continued scowling. I am not taking off my shirt. As they argued, Thor tiptoed past him, obtained a visitor ID, and walked away. Meanwhile, at Avengers Tower, Bruce was curled up on the floor face down and crying. Natasha was trying to comfort him, but to no avail. Please, everyone, leave me alone, said Bruce. I guess that is why he isn't in charge, said Wanda. When is Thor going to come back? Whenever Tony brings him back, said Natasha. Let's all watch a movie. I hate movies, Bruce said. Then we can watch a TV show, said Natasha. I hate TV shows, Bruce said. 
I love TV shows, said Peter Parker, strolling in. Hey, kid, what are you doing here? Natasha asked. Your friend Hawkeye let me in. Isn't that awesome? Peter asked. Okay, but what business do you even have here? Asked Natasha. I came here to visit my buddy, Mr. Stark, Peter said, feeling excited. He's not even here. He went to visit Captain America in the hospital, said Natasha. Oh, no, what happened? Peter asked. Somebody threw him out the window, said Wanda. Oh, that sucks, Peter said. I hope he gets better soon. He will, said Wanda. How do you know? Peter asked. I just know, said Wanda. Chapter 15 Thor tiptoed up to Captain America's hospital room and peeked in through the window. He looks like he's sleeping, said Thor. I'm going to wake him up. Thor didn't barge in, shouting an ancient war cry. Captain America just sat there, looking like he was dead. Thor stared at Captain America. Are you okay, buddy? He asked. Just then a grumpy Tony stomped in, stomped in the room. Thor, are you traitor? Tony snapped. How am I a traitor? Thor asked, coughing. How? You just called me and casually walked through the security check, leaving me to be subjected to a pat-down, Tony shouted. So? Thor asked. Tony pushed past Thor and stared angrily at the dead-looking Captain America. I think he may be dead, said Thor. No, said Tony. Let me talk to him. Whatever, said Thor, as Tony got even closer to Captain America. Go, go, Captain America, Tony said softly and gently. Captain America immediately sprang like, Hey, Tony, what are you doing here? Just dropping by, said Tony. And so is Thor. Thor smiled across his huge, muscular arms. Nice to see you, buddy. Captain America smiled. Hey, Thor. So when are you going to get out? We need you, Tony asked. Oh, no. Are we being attacked? Captain America asked, sitting up. Yes, said Tony. So please come back and help us. This time, Thor elbowed Tony in the chest. Don't lie to him like that. You're going to stress him out, Thor said. Hey, oh, hey, Tony. What are you doing here? Captain America asked. Good to see ya. Yes, yes. We just went over this, said Tony. Okay, said Captain America, relaxing. Thor coughed again. Oh, my. You're ill, aren't you? Captain America asked, looking at Thor with concern. I don't think so, said Thor. What about you? I'm fine, said Captain America. I should be able to leave soon. I'm just a bit beat up. Any broken bones? Tony asked. That wouldn't be good. Actually, said Captain America, pointed his leg. It's broken. Tony cursed. Language, said Captain America. Oh, hey, you brought Thor. Hi, Thor. Hi, Thor said, coughing. Are you ill? Captain America asked. That's a horrible cough. No, Thor said. I already told you earlier. Right, said Captain America. Sorry about that. Okay, this is boring, said Tony. Let's go back to work. Oh, hey, Tony, when did you get here? Captain America asked. Tony faced and turned to leave. Come on, Thor. Very well, said Thor. Goodbye, Captain. He then followed Tony out the door. Even so soon? Okay, see you around, Captain America, and he began singing the USA National Anthem. As soon as Thor and Tony left, Tony signed frustration. Something's obviously wrong with him. Poor guy, said Thor. Don't think he'll be damaged permanently, do you? I sure hope not, said Tony. We need a leader. Okay, hey, let's call Hawkeye and ask him how he's handling things. Okay, said Thor. As Tony pulled out his cell phone, someone walked by carrying a stretcher with a man on it. The man was pale, but had ice blue eyes and long black hair. Thor tends to ground. I don't like the looks of that guy, he said. Relax, Thor. It's just a hospital patient, said Tony. But it looks like my little emo lying punk for frost giants bring on your adopted brother, said Thor. Just a coincidence, said Tony. Anyhow, Hawkeye didn't pick up. We should head back now. Can I go to the bathroom first? Thor asked. No, Tony said. I know you're just trying to make an excuse to stalk that poor guy. No, I really, really have to go, said Thor. <laughs>
What was that? Tony shouted. I really don't know, Thorsten. I found it in the lab, though. Well, hopefully it wasn't anything important. Said Tony. Now this, this is real music. Whatever, said Dora. Good going rolls there. May I roll down my window? What for? We've got enough air circulating through mine, said Tony. Just please, don't be open it, Dora, said Panikin. Whatever, Thor, whatever, said Tony. I rolled down his window and it coughed so hard that he threw up. Ew, that's disgusting. You're sick. Just sick, Tony shouted. Sorry, said Thor. This isn't normal for me at all. I feel something is terribly wrong. Yeah, you know what's wrong? You're insane, Tony shouted. You really think you have business doing that in my car? Sorry, it won't happen again, Thor screamed and then began crying loudly. Thor sighed and turned the music up louder. Cover up Thor's welly. You're gonna have to clean my entire car when we get back. No! Thor yelled. Chapter 17. What are you doing? No, that's not what it Tony and Thor came back to find Hawkeye typing something on a laptop. What are you doing? Tony snapped at him. Creating a theme song for myself, said Hawkeye. We're supposed to be in charge of everyone else. Where are they? Tony asked. Hawkeye continued struggling to continue typing. Tony looked over, over Hawkeye's shoulder. There's a document that said, Hawkeye is super cool, super cool, super cool. Hawkeye is super cool, super, super cool. Tony signed and stared at Hawkeye. Really? Hawkeye nodded slowly and seriously. Tony reached over and pushed a power button on the laptop. There will be no more of this nonsense. Just then Peter Parker stormed into the room. Hey guys, I just finished making my get well card from Captain America. Tony turned around and glared at Peter. What are you doing here, kid? Peter screamed. Mr. So Stark, your friends let me in. There are no friends of mine, said Tony. They're just co-workers. Hawkeye found Tony to turn his laptop back on. Oh, said Peter. Hey, do you think you can take me tomorrow to visit Captain America so I can drop us this card? Yeah, sure. I'm totally not an important busy man who's barely to do to give kids rides in my fancy expensive car and give people get well cards, Tony said. Oh, man, said Peter. This is really important to me, though. I don't care, said Tony, good enough going to get a beer. I don't... I need a beer. By the way, get off here. Get around to drive with your Fine, I will, said Peter. Bye, Mr. Stink. Hey, Tony yelled and it's Nick sips his beer. You should be lucky that I'm not being your sorry butt right now. Peter looked sad. I'm not we're friends. No, we're not, said the kid, said Tony. God. Peter ran off crying. Hey, that was harsh, said Natasha, falling out from under the table. Ah, oh, Black Widow smashed it, Tony yelled, putting his beer down. And Natasha Walter just stood up. He's just a kid. Well, he's a bad kid, said Tony. He deserved that. Hawkeye had finally got his computer back up and was on YouTube. Let's all calm down, he said, typing copy music into his search bar. No! Tony yelled and swore. Hawkeye selected one of the videos and began playing the volume all the way up. Tony stormed out of the room. I'm out of here. I like it, said Natasha. It's beautiful, Hawkeye. Sorry, you said Hawkeye, turned to look deep into her eyes. Meanwhile, all Peter knocks him up was in that room with Bruce. Hey, what's your name? Peter asked. Bruce ignored him. I'm Peter, said Peter, sticking his hand out for a handshake. Bruce knocks up the handshake. Peter was hand back away for an awkwardly long amount of time. Whatever, Peter said. So rude, I'm going home. See ya. Peter then headed home. As Peter's head home, Thor was sobbing while scrubbing Tony's car. It's not fair. Why have the gods forsaken? Why? Why have the gods forsaken Thor, Prince of Asgard? Just then it began running, raining heavily. That's it. I'm going inside. Thor said, Henny doors. Chapter 18. So, Thor, did you finish cleaning my car? Tony asked, struck in, struck in his ugly, weird looking beard. Jonas Thor lied. Oh, I see it's, it's raining, Tony said. Are we due for a thunderstorm? Thor chuckled weakly and looked away. You know, a clean car is very important for my image, Tony said. I can't have vomit all over it. I know, Thor said softly. Hey, I'm going to take a shower, said Tony. You may want to go back to Asgard. Oh, sure, Thor said, turning and walking away. Something's wrong, isn't it, Thor? One asked. How do you know, Thor asked. I just know, said Ponder. You can tell me. I'm trustworthy. No, you're not, said Thor. Anyway, I'm just not feeling the best. Oh, we all have our off days, Mona. Just get some rest. You'll be better after that. Maybe, said Dora. She shows up. Um, you're worried about Captain America, said Wanda. I did see you'd be fine. I think I want to visit him again tomorrow, said Dora. Nice choice, said Wanda, but you know, Tony would take again. I'll just fly it. You have a magical habit, you know, said Dora. Right, said Wanda. You saw your bird at the hospital, didn't you? Maybe, said Dora, rolling his tiny green eyes. I do not wish to speak of him. He's just a little emo and a lawyer, too. But he's your brother. Do you not know your brother? I mean, it's nothing to me. Brother sucks, said Thor, pushing her aside and stomping away. Wanda looked like she was about to cry, but she did not cry. She decided, instead decided to get revenge on Thor.
Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Um. Should I can. You? Yeah, I think I'll go for a little bit longer. Chapter 19. Peter arrived home and tried to quietly make his way into his bedroom, but Aunt May caught him. Peter, where have you been? Aunt May asked. I was visiting a friend, Peter like, which one? I didn't know you had any friends, said Aunt May. Oh, said Peter, I'm going to go do my homework now. Is that your homework? Aunt May asked, pointing to get well her. Yes, Peter like, may I see it? Aunt May asked. No, you may not, Peter said, running off. That boy's acting suspicious in Aunt May. Hmm, there that day. Hey, Peter, it's almost dinner time. Want to go get Burger King, get cheeseburgers, Aunt May asked. Oh yeah, heck yeah, Peter said. Peter put his home down his homework. Okay, then get your clothes on. We'll go, Aunt May said. Peter looked down and realized that he was in his underwear. Oh. Chapter twenty. When Peter and his aunt were at Burger King, Peter confessed to make a car for a friend who was hurt and in the hospital. Aw, that's so sweet, Peter said. Aunt May, what friend is? His name is Steve Rogers. Peter lied. Would you like me to drive you to the hospital tomorrow so you can give him the car? And Aunt May asked. Yes, please. Thank you, said Peter. You're welcome. You're finishing your cheeseburger, Aunt May said. Chapter 21. The next day, Thor woke up extra ready to go visit Captain America. This time, all by himself. I'm gonna fly, Thor said, coughing. You're there. Come here. I require your assistant. How am I a guess of assistance, sir? That's a decent by advice. Thor shrieked. Oh, what was that? He ran off screaming and didn't stop running until he reached the hospital. Did, did, did I hear someone screaming? Tony asked, sipping his morning beer. He paused for a moment, but there was only silence. Yeah, I suppose not. Tony ran to the hospital and then stopped. Very out of breath. May I help you, sir? Asked the person at the front desk. Eric caught his breath and looked at him. A disembodied voice is chasing me, he said. What? The desk person said. Don't be silly. There's no such thing as a disembodied voice. If you're here to visit a patient, you need to check in. Oh, yes. I'm here to visit Captain America, said Thor. Oh, him. He's popular, said the desk person. She was looking at the fan girls trying to see him. Are you one of them? No, I'm not a girl, Thor said. I'm a girl. Whatever, you're mental, whatever you are, said the desk person. Are you going to pat me down? Thor asked, smiling innocently and tilting his head. For a desk person just sighs there in. Really, dude? Really? No, that's the door, and then his phone started ringing. Hold on, that'd be answer. Wait a minute. Thor does not have a phone. Why would they say he had a phone? He then picked up the phone. Hello, this is Thor. Thor, this is Tony. Were you screaming and running around this morning? Yes, but I had a good reason. I was scared, said Thor. Tony left. You were scared. Aren't you supposed to be a little, I don't know, brain powerful? Tony, I'll hold it. Just abide with this morning while I was looking for my hammer, said Thor. Would that not scare you? Hmm, Tony said. Hearing voices, are we? I think you need to get some rest. You are not in good shape right now. By the way, did you hear a man's voice or a woman's voice? A man's, and it sounded British, said Thor. Are you sure it wasn't your own voice, Tony asked? No, Tony, Thor said. It wasn't my own voice. It wasn't nearly as deep enough. Okay, so what did it say, Tony asked, finishing his beer. It said, how may I be of assistance, sir, Tony said. That's Thor said. That scares me, Tony. Tony sighed. Thor, really? Yes, Thor squeaked. Tony then hung up. All right, time to go check in our good captain friend, Thor said, walking down the hall. Hey, you know what? Speaking of voices and of getting a beer, I think I need a drink because I have a dry throat. I'll see you soon. But then they will let me out soon. I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. Keep thinking that way, buddy, said Thor. Can I sit on your bed? No, said Captain America. Don't do that. But I'm exhausted, Thor said. Please let me sit down. I said, no, if you're exhausted, you can't just leave, said Captain America. No, I suppose I'll be fine, said Thor, leaning against the wall and coughing again to coughed up blood. You're still coughing, I see, said Captain America. Yes, and I'm tiring much more easily than before, said Thor. This is not normal for an Asgardian. I am afraid I may have been cursed. Could this be the work of Loki? Thor shuddered at the thought of Loki. Just admit that you're no better than the rest of us, said Captain America. You may have huge muscles and a magic hammer, but you're just a man. 
Stop acting like you have something to prove. Or side. Of course, a foolish mortal such as you would not understand. Hey, if you're gonna, all you're gonna do is call me foolish. Leave, Captain America shouted. Okay, okay. No need to get so angry, Thor said, turn leave. I won't come around here then. I'll see you when you return to work. Okay, said Captain America. Goodbye, Thor. I hope you don't cough up blood again. Thor left, and there they appear. Parker dropped by for a bit later. During that time, Thor was walking around and around inside, begging his trusty hammer to come to him. It was very hot inside, the sun was beaming directly onto Thor. Sweat was glistening onto his huge, muscular arms. Oh, if only a GPS, Thor said. I have no idea where I am anymore. Hey, I bet Tony has a GPS. That's so not fair. Thor looked up at the time and flying around again. Seriously, what does he think he's doing? Thor asked and then began running. Hey, you, look at me, hey. Iron Man began flying faster to avoid Thor. Oh, I guess he hates me, said Thor. Meanwhile, Captain America forcefully took the card from Peter. Thank you, little boy, but I do not know you. Who are you? I'm Peter Parker, said Peter, and I know you from my school's educational videos. All schools had those educational videos with me and them, said Captain America. All schools. Oh, said Peter, sorry for bothering you then. My aunt is waiting for me. I have to go now. Bye, Captain America. Captain America chuckled. Bye, kid. Don't come back. Chapter 23. Later that day, Tony got a phone call from Captain America. Hello? Tony asked. Hey, Tony, this is Steve, Captain America said. Tony sighed. Steve, what do you want? They're releasing me from the hospital today. Can you give me a ride to my home? Captain America asked. I cannot, Tony said. I'm busy. I could ask Hawkeye, though. Oh, yeah? What are you so busy with? It sounds like you're on a plane, said Captain America. No, I am the plane, said Tony. I'm flying around. Just flying around. Oh, there, your plane catches on fire, Captain America said. I have no one to get me out of here. Fine, let me get on my plane and get into a car just so I can drive you to your house. Where the heck do you even live, Tony asked. Captain America sighed. Come on, Tony, you know that I... Just then, Tony was in the room by disinvited voice. So, you are flying dangerously close to... Shut it, Bonehead, Tony said. I know what I'm doing. Excuse me, Captain America asked. Who are you calling Bonehead? No one, no one at all, said Tony. There's no one here. I'll come to pick you up soon. Just let me land my airplane. The rest is clinging, and then clinging and some metal in the ground. Did you land it just now, Captain America asked? Yes, said Tony. I'll be coming to pick you up soon. Just let me use the bathroom first. Okay, go ahead and do that. Right in front of whoever you're insulting earlier, said Captain America. Already did, Tony said. Chapter 25 I have, hey Bruce, good to see you again, said Captain America. Bruce looked away without saying anything. Did I do something wrong that I'm not aware of, Captain America asked. No, but he did, once and once on the table. He threw you out the window and, cause you got, and caused you to go to the hospital in the first place, you know. Did he? I cannot remember such a thing, said Captain America. I suppose that maybe I had simply fallen. Thor is sickly, as of now, said Wanda, flat following her nails. We gain one and lose another. I suppose that's just how things go. Why are you sitting on the table, Captain America asked. Because I can, said Wanda. Okay, said Captain America as Bruce walked away, shaking his head. By the way, I know that Thor is a uh, sickly. He coughed up blood in my hospital room. Ew, said Wanda, that's disgusting. So are you. You're sitting on the table. People eat off of that, said Captain America. Where is Thor, anyway? Wandering around the streets, said Wanda. And I'm sure I'll find our villain eventually. It's hard to miss. At that moment, Thor stumbled into the room, all covered in sweat. I'm back, he shouted. Oh, hey, Cap, you're out of the hospital already. Yes, I've suddenly healed. It must have been a miracle. Praise God, Captain America said. Thor's eye twitched, but he said nothing for a moment, and then said, I'm going to take a shower. I'm very sweaty. Yes, you are. You smell horrible, said Wanda. Get off the table, you little witch, said Thor, pushing her off as he walked by. Oh, wait, said Wanda, in the floor. That hurt you, big booty. You make me so angry. Meanwhile, Spare Man is in the building, climbing around the ceiling. No one knew he was there. Chapter 26. Thor squirted a ton of shampoo on his long, golden, silky hair. The shampoo ascended like roses. He then let the water run through his hair and down his huge, muscular back. Oh, he said, that was nice. Suddenly the water got freezing cold. Thor was covered in chill bumps. Thor screamed, jumped out of the shower. Cold, 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 cold. Why not? Is the water so cold all of a sudden? My now is the case. That was damaged to the central water heater, sir, said the distant by voice. Oh, it's a boy, boys is back! Thor screamed, I gotta get out of here! He then wrapped himself up in an expensive, fancy bathrobe and ran out of the bathroom still screaming. As Thor ran, he crushed into Bruce, knocking him over. Oh, come on now! Bruce snapped, are you hearing voices again, Thor? Yes! It's a distant boy, boys that called me so! Thor screamed. Bruce sighed as he got off the ground. Thor, Steve is right, you need a professional. Now, hearing distant boy, boys is not a good thing. Oh, are you a doctor? Thor snapped, stay out of my business! I was only trying to help, Bruce said, frowning deeply. Well, you're not helping, said Thor. I need to find a place to hide. Thor then ran off. Wanda, said Bruce. Are you planning to waste in Thor's head? 
I may be, said Wanda. Now keep out of it or I'll plant a poison in your heads. Fire Bruce crossed his arms and glared at her in disapproval. You had better not, Missy. Spider had crawled across the ceiling to face right above Bruce. Oh, hey, do hey Dr. Banner, Spider-Man said. Bruce screamed in fright. Ah, kid, what are you doing here? Just hanging around, Spider-Man said, hanging himself by the thread of silk. What are you doing? Nothing right now, but I'm about to beat your butt in just a second, Bruce said. Only if you can catch me, Spider-Man said, jumping down and running off. I bet you can. Oh, yes, I can, Bruce shouted, chasing up Spider-Man. I'll catch you and beat you to death. That's not a nice thing to say to old kids, said Spider-Man. I thought you were supposed to be a nice guy. I am, when you don't irritate me, said Bruce. Oh, excuse me, Spider-Man said sarcastically. I didn't mean to hurt your fragile feelings. Bruce ground frustration. Oh, listen, kiddo. I'm right upset for various reasons. First of all, it's Thor. Now it's you. Stop messing with me, or I will kill you. I don't think you can, Spider-Man said sarcastically. Spider-Man said Spider-Man swiping Bruce's glasses off his face. But you can try to get these back. He then climbed up into the ceiling with one hand. Oops, I might drop them. Tee hee. Bruce rolled his eyes and took a deep breath. Please come back to me, kid. I need them for science. It's a stupid reason. I think I'll keep them, said Spider-Man. I'm asking you nicely, said Bruce. See, I can be a nice guy. Nah, I don't think so, said Spider-Man. You have to catch him. Spider-Man tossed the glasses. Bruce ran forward to catch the glasses, but they fell to the ground and shattered. Bruce swore loudly. Natasha heard it. He just said a bad language word, she said to herself. Spider-Man left her to say, sorry. Kid, this is not okay. You can't go around and destroying other people's belongings, Bruce shouted. It was an accident, Spider-Man lied. No, it wasn't. You deliberately stole my glasses and dried off my face and then threw them at Bruce. Well, said Spider-Man. You will be paying for them, said Bruce. Why? Don't you have a bunch of spare pairs lying around? Spider-Man asked. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but glasses are expensive, said Bruce. Well, then stop breaking them all the time, Spider-Man said. Bye-bye, Banner. He then jumped out an open window, clung it to one descendant. Bruce looked around to make sure no one was watching and broke down crying. Chapter 27 Hey, so I was just wondering about something. Since Spider-Man climbed back into the building through an near empty window. No, you can't join the Avengers, said Tony. Get out. I wasn't going to ask about that, said Spider-Man. I just want to see what kind of cool stuff you do here. This is my home, you know, said Tony, trying to push Spider-Man out of the way. You're trespassing and I can have you arrested. No one can arrest me. I'm a hero, said Spider-Man. Hey, do you have a bathroom by any chance? Yes, but you can't use it, said Tony. You will need to leave, or I'll call 911. He didn't help a phone. I've got my phone ready. Oh, is this a bathroom? Spider-Man asked, pointing to a storage closet. No, that's a storage closet, said Tony. Cool, what's in it? Spider-Man asked, running over to the closet and turned the door on. No, don't open that, Tony said, running over to stop Spider-Man. It's too late. Spider-Man opened the door, and a ton of junk came out, such as scrap metal and random wires. What's all this? Spider-Man yelled. Are you building something? No, Tony lied, crossing his arms. Put it back now. Why? It's dangerous. Oh, it's supplies are building a bomb, isn't it? Ah, oh, it's building a bomb! Spider-Man shouted. We're having to walk into the road that moment. Tony, you're building a bomb. Shame on you. That's dangerous. Hey, Steve. The worst. But Tony's building a bomb. This is very serious, Tony, said Steve, coming into the room. What were you thinking? Avengers are not supposed to be building bombs. I'm not building a bomb. Tony yelled. Why would I? Tony start building a bomb. Is that a rhetorical question, Steve asked. You need to dispose of all that junk now. It's a threat to our safety. You can't tell me what to do. Tony shot his spare and wanted off to go find a bathroom. I'm in charge of the team, so I can't said Steve, and I'm telling you to get rid of that stuff. No! Tony stopped us my baby. Someone's having a mental breakdown, said Thor. Absolutely, said Steve. Tony, please go to your calm down room. No, I am calm, Tony lied, wiping away his tears. I'm not supposed to bring that room up in front of others, by the way. Why? There's no shame in having a calm down room, said Steve. Just shut up, Steve, Tony shouted. I will not go to that room. You're lost, Tony. It looks so comfy there, though, said Steve. Then why don't you use it? I have no use for it, said Tony. Only if you come with me, said Steve. No, no, said Tony. There, uh, sir, there appears to be somebody in the calm down room. Already be somebody in the calm down room, said this invited voice. Thor shrieked again. No, the disembodied voice is back. Is no one safe? He then ducked down and sat under a table. However, Thor is actually bigger than the table, so it just rested on his back like a little shill. Yeah, you know what? That calm down room sounds pretty nice right now, said Tony. See ya, Steve. Tony then walked off, swearing all the way. Language, Steve shouted. Thor giggled. This table will protect me from the disembodied voice. Miss Steve, aren't you going to try to protect yourself? Well, I do have a seal, said Steve. But it's not her and me. It's just a voice, Thor. It calls me Saw, Thor screamed. Do you want to go to the mental hospital? Steve asked calmly. No, did I sack me, said Thor. Just protect me from that voice, please. Thor, this is a secure building. I can do a scan of it for intruders, though, that makes you feel better, said Steve. 
Please, Thor said. I don't know how long I can stay at this table. I have to go to the bathroom. Thor, Steve rolled his eyes. Not a choice, man, he said, and then walked off into an empty room. Yo, any intruders in here? Steve said, busy deal. No one here but me, said the disembodied voice. Oh, that's good to hear, said Steve. No, Steve, do not talk to the disembodied voice, Thor panicked. Chapter 28. Um... Let's see. Well, there's a lot to unpack right here. So, I think maybe I'll save the rest for a future, um, adventure. Yeah, adventure. What, what do you mean my room looks girly? Uh, it's Pepper's room, totally not mine. Uh, seriously, uh, I'll be back. I must tell everybody about this atrocity. I will not rest until everyone is aware that people are writing bad stories about us. We need to find who's doing this and stop them. Now, I've got to go. Tony Stark out. Okay, people, we are back. I know I said I was leaving earlier, but I decided to make a part two. So, um, I am going to read you more of this monstrosity, this atrocity that poorly depicts me and all the Air Avengers. But mostly me, of course, because I'm fabulous like that. Also, if you notice any difference between my hair and beard from the last, thing, last part, it's because I died freshen up a bit. I may or may not have been drunk when I cut my beard, but that is not something I want to talk about. We're going to read chapter 28 for real this time. Chapter 28. Tony reluctantly opened a door marked Tony's calm down room, walked in, grabbed an Iron Man body pillow, and began sobbing. When he finally stopped, he realized that he could still hear some sobbing and heavy breathing. What is heavy breathing? I don't even want to know. Tony tensed up and looked across the room. He then noticed that there was a bunched up blanket in the corner. Tony cautiously walked towards it and pulled it up. Underneath was Bruce, all curled up. Tony screamed, What are you doing in my calm down room? Trying to calm down, Bruce said. Please put the blanket back on me. The blanket was an Iron Man blanket made of very soft fleece. Okay then, said Tony, carefully send the blanket back on Bruce. I'm going to pretend that this didn't happen. Oh, I was wondering. Um, does his blanket look anything like this. Yeah, okay, it's too zoomed in to fucking see, but zoomed in too far to see, but I really do have a blanket with my awesome self on it. Anyways, I don't care if you didn't see that because the story is more important. You've got to know about this garbage that exists somewhere in the world. Okay then, said Tony, carefully send the blanket back on Bruce. I'm going to pretend it just didn't happen. He then slowly backed out of the room. As he did, he heard Wanda talking to Thor. So, was he really pulling a bomb? Wanda asked. Yeah, said Thor. And I would leave forever, said Wanda. Tony tried to retreat around the corner, but Wanda saw him and punched him in the chest. How dare you, she screamed. How dare I what, Tony asked, cringing. They're building a bomb, Wanda said with teary eyes. This is why I don't trust you. Okay, now there's another chapter 10 after all these chapter 20s somethings, and this one is, it's, I must have shrooms, Thor said. My god body is dependent on shrooms. Eventually, Dr. Strange got tired of waiting for Thor. I guess he's not coming, he said. Tony, Dr. Strange got up and left the pizza pig. What is the pizza pig? This is not something that was ever established earlier in the story. After Thor ate a ton of mushrooms, he flew so fast he made it all the way to Avengers Tower without even realizing he'd flown all that way. There was something odd and sticky all over the building, though. It was spider webs from Spider-Man. Thanks for helping me, Thor said landing. Where am I? What is this sticky stuff? Ew, Thor! You got sticky stuff on a freshly clean building, said Captain America, walking by while holding a trash can lid. What? No, said Thor. This wasn't me. I found it like this. Why are you holding a trash can lid? 
Don't lie, Thor. You know that you're evil deep down, said Captain America, ignoring the question and slowly blinking. You did it! I did not, Thor yelled. Don't you trust me, Steve number two? I don't trust anyone, said Captain America. I don't even think of going into that building. You have no business there. He then walked away robotically. He's not going to hurt, said Thor. I will give him a conquer doodle with my helmet to make him feel better. Go there, come here, I require your assistance. Nothing happened. Captain America robotically walked into traffic. Not blinking. Oh no! He's going to get himself killed, Thor said. Steve 2, watch out for that car! Suddenly a car zoomed towards him. Spider-Man was crouching on the roof of the car. Oh no! He's gonna get himself killed, Spider-Man said. Hey, don't copy me! Save him, Spider-Boy, Thor said. What do I do? Spider-Man asked, flailing his hands wildly. It was too late by then. The car ran over Captain America. Crunch! Thump! Crack! Clang! I heard a clang, said Thor. I didn't know he was metallic. Thor ran over to check on the body. Please, tell me you're still alive, he said. And now we've got another chapter 14. Wow! I'm glad I'm good with numbers, so this definitely was not my doing. Where are you taking me now, Thor? Dr. Strange grumbled as he followed Thor across the busy city sidewalk. Shh, it's a surprise, Thor said. I don't know why I even listened to you, Dr. Strange admitted. You completely abandoned me back at the pizza pit. I still don't know what the pizza pit is, by the way. Anyways, back to the story. I'm huge, that's why you listen to me, said Thor. Just look at my arm muscles. No, said Dr. Strange. Thor made a turn to reach the hospital. You're taking me to a hospital? Dr. Strange asked, scoffing. Dr. Strange does not do hospitals. There's business I need to do here, said Thor. Why couldn't you take the Avengers with you, Dr. Strange asked. Why me? Because all the other Avengers are dead, said Thor. Why does it say Avengers instead of Avengers? That's not what we're called. Okay, chapter 19 again. The new rules for Avengers secret meetings. 1. No texting or making phone calls during the meeting. 2. Remain seated for an entire duration of the meeting. 3. No speaking unless prompted to. 4. No juice for Bruce. 5. No touching anyone else under any circumstances. 6. No pointing at other people. These are our new rules. Any questions? Captain America asked. You know, why can I have juice? Bruce asked. It's a spill hazard, said Captain America. Are you calling me clumsy? Bruce asked, tenting up. Yes, yes we are, said Tony. Well, that's rude, said Bruce. Not that they particularly like juice anyway. So everyone else can have juice, though, Black Widow asked. Yes, Captain America. That's unfair discrimination, Black Widow shouted. Sorry, rules are rules, said Captain America. No shouting. He didn't have an air rule. Note 7. No shouting or scream. Yelling or screaming. If Bruce can't follow the rules, then he'll be kicked off the team, Captain America. I can follow the rules, Bruce said, standing up. No, you can't. You just broke rule number two, idiot, Captain America said. I'm not an idiot. I'm a scientist, said Bruce. No, you're not a scientist, dude, said Tony. Like can I do experiments does not automatically make you a scientist. Shut up before I experiment on you, Bruce, asked, making a f Bruce said, making a fist. Oh, ho, ho, is that a threat? Because it's a lame one, Tony said. I'm going to make you lame, Bruce yelled. Roll seven, said Captain America, adjusting his helmet. Right, Bruce said, taking a deep breath. I must follow the rules. Good job, sweetheart, said Black Widow, petting Bruce on the back. Do not pat me on the back, said Bruce. Now that we have all the rules down, I think we're good, said Captain America. Also, we'll find Natasha. Why would you can leave now, Bruce asked. Yes, said Captain America. In your case, you can leave forever, and no one would miss you. Okay, Bruce said, getting up fourthly. He then pushed his chair back and stared at it for a while. Then he picked it up and threw it across the room. Ah! Chapter 20. Bruce never came back. I guess we can change our roles now, Captain America said, seeing as our friend isn't back. If he was your friend, why did you bully him? Black Widow asked. Bully him? I bullied no one, Captain America said. He's the one who couldn't keep the rules. Does everything have to be about rules, Tony said? Yes, rules keep us together, Captain America shouted. Hey, you just broke your own rule about no shouting, said Black Widow. Oops, said Captain America. Well, I can shout if I want, because I'm the leader. I miss Bruce, Black Widow said. Well, he's not coming back, so shut up, said Captain America. Nothing seems weird about Captain America, said Scarlet Witch. Shut up, said Captain America. You're weird, you little witch. Yeah, I think that he's not really Captain America, said Tony. He's this the real one is sickly sweet. 
What do you want me to do? Prove I'm not real, Captain America asked. How can you not believe me? You're my friend. The end. Yep, that's seriously the end of it. It just cuts off. There was no plot to that whatsoever. The scenes made no some the scenes made no sense and had no connection to each other. Things happened randomly for no reason. Nobody was acting like they should. Except for Captain America. He's always an idiot. And Thor too. But I think we can all agree that was pretty terrible. However, that's not the worst one out there. There's another one that I will not be sharing until another time. For now, I want you to take a break from the horrors I have inflicted on you. But make sure to warn all your friends. Make sure they know the difference between real and fake Avengers. Make sure they know how to count and how to write a proper story. Alright, for real this time, Tony Stark is signing out. Thank you.